to look back at her remarkable return. At age eight, she was a phenom, urged by strong parental support, already playing tennis, with a talent and single-minded focus well beyond her years. When I grow up, I would like to play tennis. I like competition, and I also like winning, and tennis is the best thing I do. At 14, when most young girls are making marks in high school geometry, Capriati was making history as the youngest ever Grand Slam semifinalist. Later that year, 1990, her first big time U.S. Open test, beaten by the defending champion, Steffi Graf. I was mesmerized by her, and you know, I didn't have any fear playing her, but you know, it's just like, wow, that I'm on the court and playing against her. And she beat me pretty bad, but. <laughs> At 15 in 1991, she reached the semis here, losing a much publicized showdown with another budding teen star, Monica Sellis. She remained a top 10 player for two more years, but then suffered through what so many independent seeking teenagers experience, confusion, rebellion, bad decisions. For three floundering years, she gained weight. She lost her will to practice. She struggled to find her identity. Tennis became less important as she searched for direction. Was there ever a thought, Jennifer, that um, tennis would not be a part of your future? You wouldn't play professionally again? There's times where I just thought, you know, there's, how am I gonna do this? This is too hard. Um, especially when I was just really trying to come back and in the beginning, um, you know, back maybe in 96 it was, um, and things just didn't feel right. It was very humbling to play qualifying and then lose in the first round of every tournament. And I, I kind of thought, I wonder if, you know, she's, you know, how long she's going to do that. But Jennifer determined tennis was her love. Throughout her comeback, however, the media had been punishing in rehashing her off-court teenage troubles. Jennifer, do you still see the media, or do you see the media as your adversary? I just wish I didn't have to talk about this stuff all the time. <laughs> well, I've had a lot of time to think things over and to finally learn, you know, from my experiences. And now at 25, it was Jennifer's remarkable tennis that blossomed, bringing cheers and headlines as she captured her first Grand Slam singles title at the Australian Open. And for good measure, she made it two for 2001 at the French, sharing another heroic effort with her support system. Her major accomplishments have earned full redemption and mature reflection. We're better today. You know, it was an experience that we had to go through. And I think everyone has to go through trials, you know, and then there's tribulations. And you just, it's always that way in life. And you just have to be there and, and love each other, support each other, you know, and, and, and pray a lot. <laughs> you know, it's okay at 25 with your success this year to admit that you are good. I guess I have to give myself a little credit and pat myself on the back. <laughs> because um, I know just what it's taken me to get here. Great to see that smile and watching that press conference from a couple years ago. It's, it's almost like we, you could feel her pain. I mean, it was palpable, you know? We have no idea how much pain Jennifer Capriotti felt through those dark years. In it, but I think it was really important for her publicly to show that emotion. I think it was like a giant cleansing because then a couple of months later, she went down to the Australian Open, the next major, uh, and got the semifinals for the first time in, I think, eight or nine years. And that really, again, started to get her to a new level where she has obviously surpassed this year. And now Venus coming up today. Your thoughts?